again, we've sort of talked about what diversity is. Diversity is sort of like the difference of image to image or groups of images. Um, so I think the example I showed was like, here's FFHQ. Um, you know, these are all faces. They're fairly diverse. But one of the things that they do in this data set is they align all the eyes so that they sort of match up. Um, and that technically reduces their diversity. Um, you know, you still have people in different poses, looking up, looking down, um, you know, people kissing them, uh, people with weird hats and weird eyes. There's lots of weird hats in this model, in this data set. I don't know why. Um, but, you know, this is, this is an example of like a pretty, like, this is the good, this would be like a perfect example of like the type of diversity you might want where it's like, it's still pretty diverse, but like there's some things that match up, right? Like faces are generally fairly consistent. Um, compare that to like some of the data sets I work on that are a little bit less, less, sorry, a little bit less aligned and more diversity, but they still contain some level of, of like similarity, right? Like they still have some sort of like similar space above and above and below. The items are all centered. Um, clearly they're all plants. So they have like stems, leaves and flowers, right? So there's still some level of similarity that I think could be, um, taken out of that. Um, so, and then we've got horse zebras, right? Where again, it's like, it's sort of a question of like, well, how diverse is this thing, right? Like horses and zebras look the same, but if you look at the images themselves, they're pretty different, right? Um, you know, you've got horses in similar positions. Um, you've got multiple zebras, you've got random humans involved in these things. And this model works fairly well. So like, is this diverse? Is it not diverse? Like those sort of things. And this is honestly like, this is a hard problem for anyone to solve. Like if you were to show me a data set and be like, will this train? Um, it's often hard for me to figure out if it will train or not, depending on certain things. So, um, for an example, like here are three Z here are three photos of zebras. Um, I'm interested if we were to look at the first one, and you were to say which of these other two is most similar to this one. What 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 would you say? Would it be two or three? We're gonna look at this tool called LPIPS in a second. LPIPS provides a score um, for how how different two images are. Um, and here are the scores, they're called distances. Here are the scores for these. So uh, this image compared to this image has a score of 0.869. And this image has a score of 0.796 in terms of difference. Um, so what's funny is like, yes, this one is more diverse, but it's actually not that far off, right? And like, this is kind of the essential challenge of us trying to figure out like, how similar do our images need to be? So I think I think the answer is right that because the the zebra structure is all here right like it's bent down it's eating grass you see like all four legs and like the whole horse i believe that that is why like it, the distance is closer but clearly it's in a slightly different position there are humans that are sort of foregrounded um you know the backgrounds are different uh there's like a pool party going on here instead of this so like you know this is why this distance score isn't lower um so this is the challenge of all of our work, right? So we're like, we're going to look at some tools and be like, are these things diverse? Are they not? Like, what's going on here? Um, okay, so, and this is one of the core problems with like the way that generative models work, which is that like, they need some diversity because otherwise it just repeats the same images back to you. Um, but you also need some, what I would call generalizability, which is probably not a word, but like some structures that are similar, right? So again, if we look at FFHQ, faces are pretty much the same, but skin tone, uh, eye color, direction, background, hairstyle, like, like glasses, no glasses, hats, like those are like the diversity things, right? Um, so this is really hard to achieve, right? Like, except for faces or like maybe some big categories, that's, it's fairly hard to like actually make things uh, super structurally similar just doesn't happen in nature very often or like it's very hard to go on the internet and say like I want a thousand zebras that all look different but are all in the same pose it just like doesn't exist so like this is a core problem of machine learning and like something that everyone is trying to work on and solve right now um, and I think this also like ties to like a way that like our brains are slightly different from machine learning model brains right like we can sort of look at images and be like well these are diverse but in this way or like these are similar but in this way um, whereas a machine is kind of just like computing scores it's just like taking two images and it's running it through this deep learning network and it's saying okay the background structure is this the the animal structure is this the texture is this and it provides a score um, so humans are a little bit like we can sort of like negotiate or balance things out. Whereas a machine is just like, nope, this is the score I give it. Um, 
So this is a challenge that everyone faces. Um, so there's a tool called LPIPS. There's many other ways to like use these tools. I just use this one. I think it's pretty interesting um, or it's fairly easy to use. Um, so you can try it on your data set. So I think, um, you know, I, I think we've like someone was looking at butterflies or other structures. And it was sort of like, do you want the butterfly like always in this position? Like, is it okay if it's in this position, this position, like that sort of thing? And what I would actually recommend is like, LPIPS has uh, a tool that you can compare image to image. So I'd actually play with different images and see what the scores are. Um, see if the structure is actually the, the, the most powerful part, or if like the color or texture is more important, like those sort of things. So I'd play with that and sort of see what happens within your data set. So as I mentioned, like these are the scores for these images. And a way to think about this is like, remember that these things are, are going through a deep learning network. So let's say this image um, scores really high in this node, this node, this node, and this node. Um, you put another image through that model and it happens this, like their they're different scores are here, here, and here. But then another image is like just here, right? So this is kind of the challenge is like, it might be finding multiple things that are similar or dissimilar. Um, and that's sort of what goes into these scoring methods. Um, and there are other tools. I've got some links here to things if you're interested to check them out. Uh, there's a thing called TSNE or PCA or UMAP. Um, these are visualization tools that allow you to basically map all these things to like a grid. So essentially what you get are like some clusters where things are really similar. Um, you've probably seen these before. They're like a lot of 3D data visualization tools um, to help like sort of group group things and that sort of thing. Um, but there's also like really basic sort of statistics models. Um, like you, you could average every pixel of your entire data set and see where like the averages tend to be or like standard deviation, which is like how different is each play, pixel in these things. Um, there's a guy by the name of Pragmatal who teaches at UCLA's DMA program. Um, he, had, he just put up his, his last class um, up on YouTube. It's really, really good. If you're really interested in this, like he's got a ton of really great stuff to check out. Um, and he also has a bunch of collab notebooks. So if you're interested in that, I would definitely recommend checking that out. Um, so these are like sort of scoring tools. They're like mathematic processes to do these things. Um, but obviously like, I think there's also like some, you know, beyond just the idea of like, we want to model these things in a real world or like make, make realism happen. Um, there's also a way to just be like, you know, I want to make more dreamy or more human associations. So like, don't, you don't need to require a score. Like, I think many people will be like, I want to make sure this model trains perfectly. So I'm going to make, I'm going to do all this guesswork before I even like actually start training the model. And I would say like, if you are like concerned about your model, not training, just train it and see what happens. Um, you know, at the end of the day, like, even all these scoring methods don't necessarily always tell you what's going to happen when you train it in style again or mute it or other things. So, uh, you know, this will be a cool tool. I recommend playing with it, but I wouldn't say like you have to use it or it's the only thing you can do. All right, cool. So let's take a look at uh, LPIPs really quickly. Um, so I've got this collab notebook. Um, let's see if we're doing better in terms of uh, having a notebook that actually is readable and usable. Um, so we'll go ahead and open this. Um, I would say you probably don't want to follow along with this version. Let's follow along with the other ones. But if you want to open it and just look at it, you're more than welcome to. All right, so this is um, LPIPS. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're just going to connect to our, to our runtime. And we'll see if I get a V100. So in this case, I get a P100. It doesn't really matter. This stuff is really fast. Don't worry about speed with this one. Um, so. Uh, just to tell you what's going on here, because I know some of you are interested in like what's actually happening here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clone over GitHub into uh, Colab, and then I'm going to pip install lpips. Uh, I don't know. This is like the pipa command, I guess. Um, so we'll go ahead and run this cell. So it turns out that lpips can be installed as a, as a library, but then we're going to download some of the scripts from this repo. So that's now done. So if I refresh my file browser over here, I'll see perceptual similarity. So I assume that's what PS stands for. I don't know what the L LPI stands for. Um, cool. So next thing we need to do is we need to get uh, data into our collab notebook. Um, one way to do that is to hook it up to Google Drive, right? We could come over here and we could just uh, click Google Drive and connect.
So sometimes you don't even need the code anymore. I don't know when this happens or when it doesn't, but now my Google Drive is connected here. Um, another cool way to do this is this thing called GDown. Um, so we're going to download, I've already like pre-processed the horse's zebra folder. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to download a zip file and then I'm going to unzip it using these commands. And the nice thing, the reason you might want to do this is because if you're on two Google servers, um, you're like over the Google ethernet, which is going to be like insanely fast. So it's kind of nice to do this. Uh, it's much faster than uploading your own file directly to Colab. Um, okay. So this is all saved out now. So if I refresh, you'll see, I've got a folder here called horse to zebra. And inside there, there's a folder called horse and a folder called zebra. Um, this code just quickly like displays those images, um, in the sort of console here. So we'll spit out some of these images. Cool. So we've got two horses, two horse photos, and two zebra photos. Um, look at that guy's face. So weird. Um, OK, so now we've got all of our data in Colab. We're set up, ready to go here. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to compare two images. So the way this works is you're just going to um, use this command. And all you're going to do is change out P0 and P1 to be whatever the path is to your file. Um, so the quickest way to do that is just to come over here and you know go to the file you're looking for and if you hover over the file name you can just uh, right click on it and go copy path and then you can just paste that path in so i'm going to replace this with that path so uh then you just want to come in here and run this so i believe Okay, I'm going to look at two different horse images and, and see how different they are. So you run this, it should run really, really quickly. The first time you run it, it's going to need to download a file, but that file shouldn't take too long, long to download. Okay, so between these two images, we got a score of 0.828. Um, now, I, what I could do is if I want to see exactly what those images are, I could come in here and I could come up here um, and replace this these lines with just those images. So we'll paste that one in. Oops, that one's already there. Uh, maybe both these images are already here. Let's see. 461,000, I think so. Yeah, so actually, this is these are these two images right here. Um, sorry, my browser is already expanded, so I can't really show them at the same time. But it's the difference between this image and this image. And you'll say, look, those are pretty diverse, right? Um, so maybe if I were trying to figure out like what the minimum or like, you know, what are the closest images within my data set, I might just dig around through folders and try to find like images I thought were close. And then I might try to generate a score for them. So maybe I find one that is like 0.6 or 0.5 away, right? So I highly recommend that you just play with these two lines of code, like just change out images and just see what you get, right? So try images that are maybe a little bit different in terms of scale. Try images where one horse is to the right or one horse is to the left. Obviously, this is with your own data set to so do whatever you want with those. But I would recommend just playing around with this. See what you can get for like a high score and see what you can get for a low score. Make sense? Okay, so the next thing is like, let's say I've determined that like, okay, um, I've got a lot of images within the like 0.6 to 0.8 realm, but I've got some images that are like at, point, at 1.5 or 1.2. Um, and I should really just toss those out because I want to like, you know, sort of curate my data set into a, a more tighter, tighter set. So I've got inside my data set tools library, I've got a, a way to do that. Um, so we're just going to like run this. So this just installs all of the stuff that for data set tools. So this is the exact same thing you ran on your own computer um, to get it running on a uh, on Colab instead of on your own Anaconda system. So this again should be really fast. It shouldn't take too long. OK, so it looks like we're installed here. Um, so now we're going to run a command. I'm going to make my screen a little bit smaller so it can can fit more on here. Um, 
So we're going to run a command that feels a little bit longer, but is actually like, once I break it down, I think it'll be a little bit easier to understand. So this command is the sort.py command. I think I might've shown this um, last week, um, but there's a couple different things. So the first thing you do is we're going to slap, we're going to switch out to dash P. Dash P uh, could also be um, dash dash process type. Um, Python has like this crazy thing where you're gonna, we're gonna have a short name or a long name. Um, so dash P is also a replacement for process type. So we're gonna say sort using LPIPs. Um, so I think the other one is like exclude or include or something like that. Um, dash I is the short command for input folder. So if you're sick of typing dash dash input underscore folder, you can do just dash I or and dash O. So what are we gonna do? So we're gonna say, okay, I wanna look through all of my zebra photos. So I'm gonna give you the path to zebra. So again, just going to come over here and I'm going to right click on zebra and whoops and I copy that path and I'm just going to paste in the path to zebra and my output so where do I want to save these images to um, so I just named a folder and I called it slash content which if you remember is this folder um, here in collab and then I just called it zebra sort so it's just going to make a new folder called zebra sort and stick it all there um, and then the first thing you need to do is you need to give it a start image. So this is like, what image do I want to pair? Do I want to find the uh, images most closely related to it, right? Um, so you're just going to pick an image. Maybe it's like the one you love the most. And then you're going to find the images that are most related to it. Um, so I went ahead and grabbed one. I don't know what this image is, but whatever. Um, and then you also want to say, what's the maximum distance? So like, uh, you know, is it 0.8? Is it 1.0? Basically, what you're saying is anything larger than this value um, is going to get tossed out and not moved into that folder or not copied into that folder. Um, and the last thing we're using is we're using this dash dash use GPU. That's just because we have a GPU here that'll make it go faster. Um, so I'm just going to run the cell. Um, so that's it. Like the way to run all these commands is just like break them down piece by piece. Um, it can be very hard to just sort of like see everything all at once. But if you break it down into the individual arguments, it's much easier to read. So we're going to run this. I don't expect this to take too long. Um, but we can just sort of see, as it runs, you'll see it spitting out distance scores. Um, now, I don't, it doesn't spit out what file name is. I probably could fix that if someone really wants it. But you'll see here, like, okay, you know, I'm seeing a lot of stuff in the 0 0.6, 0 0.7 range. Um, I did see a 0.9, so, like, that one will get thrown out. Um, so, cool. So, we went through all these images. It's done. Um, so, there's 1,400 images in this folder, and that took, what, 5, 10 seconds? Um, it would probably take a minute on a, on a CPU, um, but it's nice to run it off GPU. Um, so now what are we going to do this, this command don't, you don't need to worry about what any of this means, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to see how many files we started with and then how many files we ended up with. So this is how many we started with. This is how many were in that zebra folder. So we start with 1474, um, and then we're going to see how many we ended up with. So 977. So, you know, again, let's say you've got 5,000 images in here and you want to get, you know, you don't really, you want to get to an ideal amount, like you want to get to like 2000, but you want to make sure they're as good as possible, right? So you could start with like a max distance of 1.0, and then maybe you get 4,000 images. And then maybe you're like, okay, let's whittle that down. Let's go a little bit closer. So then you go 0.8. Maybe that gets you 3,000 images. You're like, okay, let's go 0.7. Maybe that gets you 2,000 images, or maybe it gets you too small and you have to widen it back up again. Um, so I will say this is not like a uh, fix all like this is not like a guaranteed going to tr your model is going to train better but i think what's helpful here to think about is like these are two different machine learning models but they're sort of built in similar ways and therefore they're going to think in similar ways so uh because we've got sort of this generalizable like we know our data set has to look kind of diverse but not too diverse this is a nice way to maybe explore that um so when we start to do stuff like cycle gan or style gan we can actually see like oh you know, when I set this to 1.0, it didn't really train well. But when I changed it to 7.75, it did train well. Um, so you can start to like maybe learn a little bit about what works and what doesn't. I actually, this is a, I've done, I've only done this with like one or two data sets so far. Um, and I'm general, like anecdotally, I am finding that it helps. Um, but who knows if that's true or not? It's like, there's so many other, other parts going on in these models. So, um, but I think it's a cool way to think about visualizing your, or like understanding your data. Um, so I definitely recommend like playing with this and just sort of see what happens. Um, so this notebook is here. You can run it anytime um, and obviously reference this video again if you have questions. Um, the hard part of this is like the thing I hate about doing data set work in CoLab is like 
to open up an image, I have to like open up all these folders. I have to wait for it to load. And I've got to like double click on the image and it opens here. Sometimes it's slow. And to like open a number of images, I have to just like go through and click through all them. So it's like, it's kind of complicated. It's kind of annoying. It's not as nice as the Mac or Windows Finder, but you can do it if you want to.